Welcome to Assistant on Air, where we have conversations about building for Google Assistant. I'm Jessica, and I'll be your host today. I'm a developer relations engineer for Google Assistant. This episode is different from our typical two people sitting on the couch and chatting. We'll be hearing from Rebecca and Tony, who work on Assistant, about the latest updates. Over to Rebecca to kick this off. Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca Nathanson. I head up the product management team for the Google Assistant integrations and developer platform. With me today is developer relations engineer, Tony Klopfenstein. It always amazes me how deep the technology is that powers Google Assistant. For those of us who grew up with some flavor of sci-fi voice-powered assistant on TV or movies, something like the Star Trek computer or Jarvis, it's easy to think of a smart, helpful assistant as somehow within reach, at least with a little movie magic. But the truth is, in the real world, we can't fix it in post-production. We have to get it right from the start. When I joined Assistant in 2020, I was astonished at the depth of thought, design, and technology that went into a simple utterance like book a table for four at eight. Everything from natural language understanding, to understanding which services can fulfill the query, to creating natural text-to-speech voices that don't sound like a bad sci-fi robot. And when we add in the ability to understand what kinds of actions apps can take, and let the assistant connect users with those actions wherever it makes the most sense, it feels like magic. But that magic comes with a lot of very hard work backing it up. Let's talk a bit about where we are today. We're still in the very beginning phases of the helpful voice assistant journey, but we're seeing great growth. The range of capabilities across technology is skyrocketing. So it's no wonder that many of us are adding more and more computing devices to our homes. In 2019, the average US household had 11 connected devices. In 2021, that went up to 25. I counted in my house, let's just say I'm pulling the average up a bit. Now, with the proliferation of devices, it's more important than ever that they work better together. So users don't have to learn a bunch of new interfaces, remember which capabilities work on which devices, or pull up the same content or task over and over again as they move from one device to the next. Google Assistant is a key ingredient that helps devices to work better together because it provides a natural intuitive interface for accelerating a user's tasks across their apps and devices. You can think of Assistant as the glue that links together these devices with a consistent voice forward user experience as well as letting users jump straight to the most relevant or useful point in their apps. Assistant does this by understanding what capabilities apps support and then connecting that knowledge with users' requests to deliver the best possible response to a query. This applies whether users already have that app installed or not, whether they make the request through voice or touch, and whether the request is a simple command or a complex multi-step journey. I'm also super excited about the advances we've made across Google around better voice capabilities, from building out conversational AI like Lambda, a language model designed to engage in multi-turn conversations on virtually any topic, to crafting a more capable platform than ever with multi-turn smart dictation in Gmail. Now, not every new capability makes its way to developers on day one. But developers can absolutely leverage the investment we've made in voice by integrating their Android app with App Actions. Now I'm going to pass it over to Tony to take us through an overview of App Actions and what it can do for you. Take it away, Tony. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm Tony, a developer relations engineer for Assistant. With App Actions, users can jump right to the most interesting and useful points in your app with simple voice commands. When implementing App Actions, you can think of it as having two main steps. First, we need to process the user's spoken input and understand their request. Second, we need to fulfill the user's request. To understand a user's request, Assistant has identified and supports over 60 intents, which we call built-in intents, or BIIs for short. These BIIs are also arranged by several categories. 
Assistant does intent matching between the user's speech to the BII. Intent matching loosely means identifying several speech patterns for a particular functionality or intention of the speaker. Let's walk through the user experience and see who does what. Here, we have the user, assistant, and your app. When the user says, hey Google, order a pizza from example app, Google Assistant will process the user's input using natural language understanding, or NLU for short. Assistant will do intent matching and pull parameters supported by that intent. The BII understands that the user is initiating an order and someone could ask for a specified menu item or cuisine type. This information is added as a field to the BII, so the app can provide exactly what the user wants. Here, the order menu item BII is matched and pizza is pulled from the user's input and set to menu item dot name parameter. An Android intent is sent with this information to the app, which will open the app to the screen for selecting pizza options. Since Assistant takes care of all of the NLU, all you need to do is select which BIIs your app will support and how you want to fulfill these user requests via Android intents. It's never been easier to integrate your Android apps with Assistant by taking advantage of Android shortcuts and media APIs. These enable fast, natural entry points to content and features not only in your mobile app, but also Android TV, Android for Cars, and Wear OS apps. We're working to provide a consistent developer experience across device types to ease the effort of voice enabling your app wherever it runs. We heard from our developers that it's tricky to convey to users that there's a helpful new way to access in-app functionality with their voice. For example, if users asked Assistant for functionality that your app can handle, but didn't say the name of your app in their query, or didn't have your app installed, Assistant wasn't able to help them. To improve this, we've launched more ways for Assistant to get users to your app, so you don't need to worry about providing exact instructions to your users on how to use your app with Assistant. Two new features, brandless queries and app install suggestions, are now available immediately for all App Actions developers. When a user queries Assistant without using a specific app's brand name, also known as a brandless query, Assistant can now infer what app would best fulfill the user request and effectively route the user to that app. Let's see an example of this with the Walmart app. If a user attempts to check their shopping cart without identifying Walmart by name in the query, Assistant will still identify the desired functionality and launch the Walmart app to the shopping cart page. If a user triggers the proper Assistant query for the functionality of your app, even if the app isn't installed yet, then Assistant can provide app install suggestions. Assistant can automatically direct users to your Play Store listing to encourage them to install the app and access full functionality. Let's see how this looks when a user doesn't have the requested app installed. If a user says, check my shopping cart on Walmart, Assistant will open directly to the Walmart app Play Store page, encouraging installation. We've also improved custom intents as well. For apps using custom intents, such as schedule an appointment, machine learning models can now automatically increase the number of phrasings Assistant can recognize that will trigger the app, meaning developers don't have to come up with as many query patterns on their own. These features are automatically available to users without any additional development work required on your mobile app. Let's take a look at how your Assistant on mobile implementations can be easily scaled to different device surfaces. We're excited to extend app actions to Wear OS. When you're going for a run or a bike ride, chances are that you want to leave your phone in your pocket and keep your hands free. Your smartwatch is easily accessible but the small screen makes it hard to touch and type or to digest a lot of information. That's where Assistant comes in, enabling users to issue voice commands to their Wear OS device and get glanceable information in return. The health and fitness BIIs used in your existing mobile apps will be enabled on Wear OS devices, meaning users can trigger the same expected integrations. Let's take a look at how this will work for a health and fitness app that has integrated app actions on Wear OS. Users will be able to launch the Assistant say something like, start my run, to trigger the BII, an assistant will launch that app feature automatically. Wearables aren't the only type of device where users may want or need a voice-first experience. Let's take a look at automotive applications. If you have a use case for your app that's also appropriate for use in cars, App Actions works there as well. 
Developers can add voice functionality to car apps by expanding their mobile app actions implementation with the car app library. Once done, these apps can be used on either Android Auto or Android Automotive OS. Android Auto enables users to connect their Android phones to compatible vehicles and use their favorite apps and services right on the car's display. Android Automotive OS with Google built in allows users to access Google Assistant, Google Maps, and apps from Google Play directly from the car display without the need for a phone. The car app library provides templates that can be used to build parking, charging, and navigation apps. These templates are designed with driver safety in mind, minimizing distractions with glanceable, voice-forward UIs that adapt to the vehicle they're running in. At this time, App Actions on Auto supports BIIs that are relevant to on-the-go use cases, finding parking and charging. Let's take a look at how these BIIs work with our partner ParkWiz. ParkWiz allows users to find nearby parking spots on the go. Here's a demo of the Android Automotive OS user experience, where the user says, hey Google, find parking nearby on ParkWiz. App actions are helpful for enabling voice commands and apps that find parking locations, charge stations, and more in the car. But what if users want to listen to your media app? If you've already built a media app, Google Assistant can also be used to bring voice-first functionality to your users. When you implement a media session for your audio or video app using the Media Session API, Assistant can access the transport controls for playback, allowing users to play, pause, skip, or discover what's playing, all through a voice query to their phone, tablet, automobile, or television. Developers can add this functionality to existing media sessions by setting flags for media and transport controls inside their media session. By using the existing media session transport controls within your app, Android will display controls for play, pause, seeking, or skipping to an adjacent piece of content, depending on which actions your media session supports. There's so many ways to build a delightful experience with Assistant on Android devices. Back to you, Rebecca. Thanks so much, Tony. We at Google Assistant are so excited to keep building an Assistant that's the best way for users to get things done with their favorite apps and devices. We've seen that users want voice to work more seamlessly, and that's our goal every single day. To learn more about how you can harness Google's capabilities, check out our other Assistant sessions, like Assistant and Android for Cars, which goes into how Assistant supports Android apps and cars, and Assistant on Wear OS devices, which covers ways to integrate Assistant into your Wear OS apps. Take a look at these additional resources to help you get started today, and don't forget you can follow us on Twitter or sign up for the developer newsletter. On behalf of Tony and me, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Rebecca and Tony, for sharing with us. We hope that you like today's show. If you have suggestions of future episodes, please leave a comment below. Follow us on Twitter for updates on our newest episodes. Don't forget to also sign up for our newsletter. I've been Jessica. Chat with you next time. Yeah.